So the simple question that we are asking, should the sedition law be scrapped? At this moment, we've got India's top legal voice, Mr. Mukul Rothagi. Thank you very much, Mr. Rothagi. Uh, you've seen the, uh, you know, the debate around this law. The Supreme Court has made uh, you know, two interventions as far as sedition is concerned, one in Mr. Vinod Dua's case and the other as far as the two Andhra Pradesh channels are concerned. I want to ask you, Mr. Rothagi, in your wisdom, uh, what do you make of this law? According to me, this law must be repealed. It is a relic of British imperialism. It was not in the original penal code. It was added at a time when the British imperial masters thought that there will be an uprising by the local natives, means the Indians. And therefore, this was brought in to crush any uh, dissension or any voice or anybody raising a claim against the government of uh, the, the UK. Now, one thing is very clear, and I want to tell you, in the last more than 40 years of my practice, I have not seen frequent invocation of this law except in the last five or seven years. And it shows very disturbing trends. Uh, two things I want to say. Firstly, after the advent of the Constitution, everybody has a right of freedom of speech within certain limits. I can express a view about the government, about the court, about the hospital, about the channels, about anybody. As long as I remain within the norms prescribed by the Constitution. That is a fundamental right. Now, that fundamental right is being stifled by these false cases of uh, sedition being foisted on journalists and on other outspoken critics of the powers that be. Therefore, it is clearly in violation of the fundamental right of freedom of expression. That is number one. Hmm. Number two, even if the law is to be retained, and I strongly advocate against it, we must guard from the fact that overzealous police authorities are invoking these sections only in order to please their political masters. The political master may not even know that this section has to be inserted in the FIR. It is being done by the police only to curry favor with the political bosses to show, look, we will keep this man in custody because when the matter goes to court, the court will say, oh, this is a very serious offense and bail will not be easily granted. Hmm. This is what is happening in all these cases. And therefore, the earlier this section goes, the better. But let me tell you, the Supreme Court is having a relook on the constitutional validity of this section. And I'm sure it will be shut down. That is my view. Now, Mr. Rothagi, how will this law be scrapped? You know, there is a lot of... Uh, there is a lot of talk and for a very long time conversation is going on politically as well as legally that this law should not exist. It's bad in law. It's a, it's a you know, relic of the British Raj. But this law still exists. Why in your wisdom? Yes. See, look, it was first challenged in the Supreme Court in 1962 in the Kedarnath Singh case, mm. which is the Bible of this section. It was challenged as unconstitutional, being violative of fundamental rights and others. It was unfortunately upheld by the Supreme Court at that time. Probably because of the social setting, it was soon after independence. And there were not too many cases of sedition. So the court said, probably it upheld it, but it laid down strict parameters within which the law of sedition must work. Mm. And in one line, if you want me to tell the people who are watching this program, the one line for bringing home a charge of sedition is that there must be an attempt to overthrow the government or the administration by violent means, by a mm. call to arms, mm. which is akin to a revolution. Mm. These are the words of the Supreme Court. Mm. Now, it is a far cry from fo foisting these sections on journalists or on an outspoken critic like Dua. Dua is a journalist. He has been a food critic. I think he's a far cry from being, let's say, a member of an underground association like Alpha or being a Maoist. I mean, it is ridiculous to charge people like this with these kind of laws. The idea is only for the police officer to curry a, a political favor with his masters to 
to secure brownie points. Now again, this law has been challenged, and it has been brought before the same judge who has delivered the judgment yesterday, hmm. and the same bench has issued notice to the government as to why this law should not be declared as unconstitutional. In my view, this should be declared as unconstitutional. It is in direct breach of a fundamental right, and any law which is in breach of fundamental right has to give way to fundamental rights. Number one, number two. The Parliament imperial masters, the Supreme Court. Just one minute. Yes. The imperial masters have themselves done away with this law. True. This law does not exist in the UK. How can it exist here in Correct. the largest democracy? Now, now I want to ask you, uh, who scraps this law? Who can? The Supreme Court can. Hmm. We don't need Parliament to. There are only two authorities which can scrap a law. Hmm. Parliament can repeal the law. The Supreme Court can scrap the law. Scrap the law. Very interesting. And please, uh, let me tell you, hmm. there is a very recent example in regard to Article 377. 377 hmm. was also a relic of the imperial past. Hmm. 377 was first upheld by the Supreme Court 10, 15 years ago. Thereafter, it was again challenged. And I am proud to say I led the challenge in the Supreme Court before a bench of five judges headed by Chief Justice Deepak Mishra. Hmm. And they not only reversed their own view, they struck down the law hmm. as being completely archaic and out of time. Hmm. So it is not a Victorian morality, levels of morality of that time that we are having it here. Therefore, a court has a right to relook, maybe periodically, look at abortion cases in the US. Hmm. Every 20 years, there is a flip flop. Sometimes Correct. it is upheld, sometimes it is not upheld. So it goes on. Law is dynamic. Uh, the, hmm. the thinking of people is, is also dynamic. Mm -hmm. Thinking what was the, the sexual orientation then and sexual orientation now are also matters of you know, dynamic uh, situations. Okay. The Supreme Court also scrapped 20 years ago the offense of attempt to commit suicide. Hmm. So if somebody wants to commit suicide and he attempts and doesn't die... I, I think it's an important also. point, Mr. Rothagi. My final question, till such time the Supreme Court scraps this and the Parliament repeals, the point is right now, as we speak, last week, the Supreme Court has only said that we have to review the ambit of this law. Time to no, review. No, no, Sanket, Sanket, one minute. If the Supreme Court scraps the law, you don't need a repeal by Parliament. There yes. are two separate modes. One is Supreme Court to scrap it. And one is Parliament. Is scrap. Oh. The other is that Parliament also in its wisdom repeals it. That's another way. So two no, but, parallel but, but Mr. Rothagi, the fact that the Supreme Court has not gone that far or not taken that step right now, I want to ask you, should there not be a mechanism by which you punish those people who are misusing the law? I mean, you know, it's easy easy to say that a, a policeman is doing this. But the point is, we all know that these things happen under political pressure. It's a political tool in this country. You have raised a very important question. We have a concept of malicious prosecution, which has come down to this country from British laws. Unfortunately, because of the fact that the docket of cases in every court is exploding. Mm. Nobody has time to look at that, that people or the uh, police is doing vexatious, illegal or malicious prosecution. And that can be actually brought to book. book. Mm. But unfortunately, as I said, because of the heavy docket, a person says, Baba, let me get bail and go away. I don't want to antagonize the police. So this this aspect, you are very right, it must be raised back, mm -hmm. it must be provided vigor, yeah. and it must start from the highest court, that the court should clearly say that if these things are politically motivated, they are vexatious, then we will come down heavily on the people who are behind it. I think that's a very, very strong... Does it in a couple of cases? Yeah. The point you have raised is very valid, and I think we will reach somewhere. All right, Mr. Rothagi, thank you so much for speaking your mind. Thank you very much for joining us and expressing your views. Thank you.